amongst the bowel disorders and, and uh, upper GI disorders, much of it is, is functional. It's one of our most common in, in our gastroenterology department. It's probably the most common thing that we see. Irritable bowel syndrome, chronic constipation, GERD, non-erosive reflux disease, so biliary, functional biliary disease, we see an awful lot of it. The advances, I guess, uh, most recently that, that we've seen are, you know, there's the Rome criteria have evolved, and those are the diagnostic criteria that we use, and those are getting increasing use by clinicians. So I think it's getting easier for uh, clinicians to feel comfortable diagnosing these conditions. Uh, it doesn't help us with therapy, but certainly with, with diagnosis, I think we're seeing a wider appreciation and acceptance of the symptom-based diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome in particular, um, but also some of the other functional GI diseases. In terms of therapeutics, there are a number of exciting, somewhat investigational approaches with drugs that are not necessarily approved for functional GI disorders like IBS or chronic constipation that we've started using. We've seen some new drugs approved for chronic constipation, which is helping a subset of our patients. Uh, we've also had some some setbacks with some drugs being removed from the market. So, uh, you know, it is a constant challenge to try and treat our patients that are suffering in a, in a uniformly uh, successful way. And I also see uh, some, some very innovative types of therapies focusing on the way that our, our bodies perceive pain and trying to alter that perception or normalize that perception or unpleasant uh, stimuli and, and moderating that. And I think that's we're going to see some medicines coming down the pipe that, that help with that.